to be in the Lord's house this morning. Good song to start out with, uh, with the choir this morning. I'm glad to be washed in the blood of the Lamb on my way to heaven, and I hope you are too. Uh, and if you're not, you can be today. Uh, so praise the Lord for that. Just quickly, by way of announcement, uh, don't forget uh, the crisis control item of the month for the month of April. Hard to believe we're already in April. Uh, instant oatmeal. I uh, appreciate everyone that can make contribution to that. Street ministry every Saturday, 10 a.m. in Warnock Cove, 11 a.m. in Walkertown. Uh, and then our jail ministry, uh, I believe we've uh, going to cancel this week since we're going to all be in, most, most all of us going to be in Tennessee for the Jubilee. Uh, but uh, uh, do keep in mind the renewing member meeting on April the 15th uh, at Faith Baptist Church uh, there on Flat Shoals Road where Brother Kenny Heath is the good pastor. That'll be at 6 o'clock uh, for the renewing member meeting. If you're a current active member of the Stokes County Jail Ministry and you want to stay active in that, this is a mandatory meeting to attend if you weren't able to attend the one in March, and that's on April the 15th. That's next Monday at 6 o'clock at Faith Baptist Church. Uh, appreciate everybody that came out last night to the youth rally out at Green Pastures. Had a good time in the Lord there uh, last night, uh, so appreciate everybody that came out for that. Uh, then keep in mind, starting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, the He's Alive Jubilee. Uh, and we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do up there. Uh, that starts tomorrow at 7 o'clock and goes through Thursday afternoon. Uh, and so we're looking forward to that. Got, uh, still got preachers calling me wanting to come. Had one call me last night. Uh, and so we're up to about 25 preachers. Uh, so y'all pray that the Lord will give me uh, discernment and uh, who he wants to preach. Uh, I'm going to try to preach every single one of them. But more importantly than that, trying to get everybody preached, I just want to mind the Lord. Uh, so you help me pray about that. That'll be, again, this coming uh, starting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee at Camp Smokey. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Then next Sunday... Sunday morning and Sunday night, Brother Heath Williams, Evangelist Heath Williams, is going to be with us, and we're looking forward to that. If you've never heard Heath Williams preach, you're in for a treat. Uh, one of the best preachers I know, uh, he'll preach the paint off the walls, and so I'm looking forward to that next week, uh, him being with us Sunday morning and Sunday night. Uh, let's see, church visitation. We're going to have a visitation meeting and training on April the 20th at 10 a.m. down in the Fellowship Building. If you're interested in uh, being a part of church visitation, you need to try to attend this meeting. Um, myself and Brother Ronnie Morris will be doing this as Brother Ronnie's going to be heading up visitation for us. Uh, and then uh, we've, we're looking at May the 4th being our first visitation kickoff uh, with Brother Ronnie heading this up. Uh, and the goal is to, to, to try to go every single week. Uh, but we're going to start off slow and probably go every other week there in the month of May uh, and uh, just see uh, how it goes. Uh, but uh, So keep in mind May 4th, and we'll let you know about the time and all like that at the visitation training meeting on April the 20th. Uh, choir practice has been moved to April the 28th, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then youth choir practice uh, is canceled for the month of April with Miss Katie and the baby and everything going on there. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, be much in prayer for all the nursing home uh, ministries uh, going on this week. And did anybody get with you on your, did you find your replacement? Okay, if anybody can help Brother Alvin out tomorrow night, we need somebody to go to Warnock Cove Rehab uh, or tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock, if you can do that, if you'll see Brother Alvin. And then on Monday, the 22nd of April, that's at 7 o'clock, Brother Ray Lundy, Lundy will be preaching. We need a singer for Pretty Manor up in King. Uh, so if you can help out with that, if you'll see uh, Brother Alvin and let him know. Okay, so if you can let him know about that today. Uh, let him know about that today so he can get that taken care of. And then, of course, be much in prayer, if you will, for all these that are on the prayer list, all these that are sick and afflicted. If you will, be much in prayer for Miss Jerry Tedder. She goes tomorrow uh, to have an injection done in her knee um, where she's uh, pretty much bone on bone. Uh, and with her age, the, the, they probably really need to do surgery. But with their age, they're trying to avoid doing that. Uh, but they are going to try an injection tomorrow. She's already had one. Uh, or two uh, of the injections, and they last for a little while, but then you have to go so often and get them done. So do be much in prayer for her tomorrow as she'll go for those, uh, and be much in prayer for her. Uh, also, if you will, be much in prayer for Shelly Johnson. Uh, she had that lung transplant done, and everything went well with the surgery and everything, but from the anesthesia, uh, she's having some difficulty with her kidneys. Uh, her kidneys are not functioning to full potential, so do be much in prayer for her and lift her up to the Lord. Uh, and then, if you will, be much in prayer uh, for uh, Scott Williams, continue to pray for him. Uh, continue to pray, if you will, for Beth Hollins. Uh, be much in prayer for uh, Josh Bowen's dad, Johnny. Jamie Bowen's dad, Chuck. Uh, be much in prayer for him. 
uh, and just all these uh, that are on the prayer list. Lord knows the need in every heart and every life. No doubt we all have lost loved ones. Continue to pray, if you will, for my mom. Lift her up to the Lord, all the health issues that she's having. I'll be much in prayer for her. Uh, and just uh, be much in prayer for all of us going up uh, to Tennessee this week uh, for the Jubilee. We pray for traveling grace and traveling mercy. Uh, I'll be leaving uh, about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, Bob June will be preaching tonight, so be praying for him. And then Brother Josh Bowen will be preaching Wednesday night. So be much in prayer for Brother Josh and lift him up to the Lord uh, as he prepares to preach on Wednesday. Uh, and uh, continue to pray for Chastity Smith. Be much in prayer for her and Brother Tim Lineback. Continue to pray for Bud and Kathy Haley, Gay Moorfield, uh, Faye Thomas. Uh, continue to pray for Helen Singletary uh, and just all these that are on the prayer list. Any urgent, outspoken prayer request or anything I failed to make mention of today? Brother Matt. What, what what was his name? Okay. What's his name, your nephew? Hamby. All right, so let's remember these two this morning. Remember Lance and uh, Derek Camby and be much in prayer for them. Miss Jessica. Oh, yes. Forgot all about that. Thank you for reminding me about that. It's her daughter that's in Pennsylvania that they're not expecting to live, right? Darlene Hartwig, if you'll remember her, is a friend of uh, uh, Jessica's, her daughter, uh, is up in Pennsylvania, uh, and they're not expecting her to live, so if you will be much in prayer for that family and lift them up to the Lord, be much in prayer for the young lady up in Pennsylvania. We serve a, a God who can. Uh, the doctors may say it's the end, uh, but that, that ultimately is up to God, and if he's not finished with you, I promise uh, he'll make a way. I'm thankful today we serve a God that makes a way when there is no way. Uh, but do be much in prayer for this family. What thoughts on today? Miss Merlin. Yes. Revival at Wayside. Yes. Yeah, I think it goes through Wednesday night. Uh, so do be much in prayer, if you will, for Dan Farrell and Wayside Baptist Church. Yes. Uh, do you know Lanny's last name? Manny. Okay. Let's remember that. Lanny uh, does my mom and dad's taxes. Uh, he is uh, saved, or just recently saved, a couple years ago. Uh, and his mom, who is 98 years old, had a heart attack this past week uh, and is in ICU in the hospital. And her name, Polly Manuel. Uh, so be much in prayer for her and lift her up to the Lord, if you will. Anybody else in the. Uh, Prayer in the choir. Continue to pray for Annette Dixon, uh, her niece, Sapora, did get to come home from the hospital, but is going to have to have open heart surgery, so do continue to pray for her and lift her up to the Lord. Yes, sir, buddy. All right, yeah, let's remember uh, Chuck, Jamie Bowen's dad, uh, Iden's papa, he is undergoing cancer treatment, so do be much in prayer for him and lift him up to the Lord. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and open up in a word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessings on the service and pray for all these requests this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Visitors, thank you for being here. Make sure you get a visitor card and drop it into the offering plate. 
uh, or the offering bag as it comes by so we can get some information from you. But thank you so much for being here. Make yourself at home, and I hope the service is a blessing to you. And come back and be with us. Uh, we're just a, uh, an old-fashioned, independent Baptist church who loves Jesus. We're not crazy. We're crazy about Jesus. Uh, amen. So uh, just uh, make yourself at home this morning. But let's open up in a word of prayer. Brother Curry Eckler, how about you come and open us up in a word of prayer this morning? Lord, we love you tonight, this morning, and want to say thank you for just allowing us to, to be able to breathe the breath of your air today, and just uh, giving us strength this morning to be able to come today, and we just uh, thank you for Sunday school, thank you for the, a place where we could come and, and, and worship you this morning, and just pray, Lord, that uh, I'm glad for today, as Brother Robert said, that we serve a God that can, and I believe, Lord, that you can meet every need that was spoken here today, and there's, there's needs that no one uh, brought out, Lord, that it's on their hearts today, and I ask you, Lord, to touch and minister and meet our needs today. We thank you, Lord, today for just blessing us with visitors. We thank you, Lord, for just, uh, just allowing us all to be here. We're, uh, we're, we're needy people, Lord, that need you, and I just pray, God, you'll stir our hearts, and, and, and as, we, as we sing, I pray, God, that the Spirit of God will meet with us and help us and encourage us today, and this is where we draw encouragement is through the Word of God and through singing and worship and and allow the Spirit of God to touch us today. And I just ask you to help us. I know you said we're two or three together in my name. I'm in the midst. So I believe, Lord, I'm trusting and believing that you're in our midst today. And, and Lord, we need you. We need help today. And I just pray, God, you bless our church as they, many of them are traveling this week. I pray, Lord, the Spirit of God will be in the midst of their, uh, their jubilee. That, God, you'll bless every preacher. You'll bless Brother Robert. You'll use him and help him this week. Brother Paul Barber. All that takes place there, Lord, your will be done. And, and Lord, they'll just come back refreshed and, and stirred and, and, and uh, just a... Uh, just have your way. Bless those that's going to fill in this week. And, Lord, all things that's done, Lord, let us give you glory and honor for it. For you're worthy. And, Lord, we're not. But you are worthy. And we'll thank you for all you do in Christ's name.
praise the Lord. As the ushers come this morning to receive our Sunday morning offering, let's turn to page 323 in your hymnals. Song says, standing on the promises. I'm glad I can stand on the promises today. Brother Ronnie, you want to pray for us? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day you gave us to come to your, your house this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the service we've had this morning so far. Father, we thank you for the Sunday school hour. God, what a blessing. Father, we thank you, Lord, for each one we see here this morning. Father, I want to thank you for the visitors we have this morning, too, also. Father, I pray, God, that you touch their hearts. Father, they here for a reason. Father, they didn't walk in that door by mistake. Father, we thank you, Lord, they here with us this morning. Father, I pray, Lord, that you give them exactly what they need. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' loving name. We pray. This morning as we take the offering, Lord, I pray, God, you help the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, to eternal ages let his praises sing. In the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of Tell somebody you love them today. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior is my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to thank the Lord for taking me. I will be with you. I love you. I'm happy you love me. And I'll be one of the I've got to tell the story before we sing this song. Uh, is this my okay. Last week I told her, she said, uh, Alvin, I want to do this song on here. 
I said, okay, Bill Stanley, listen, I'm getting old, and I forget things. So you need to remind me that we're going to do this song. She said, yeah, I forgot you are an old man. You're 76 years old. <laughs> Happy birthday. Here she sang it. That's her. said my last goodbye I'll see my Savior standing at heaven's door and I'll hear him say you're welcome all your cares are left behind and you won't have I'm glad there's a better day coming when we won't have to worry anymore. I'm excited about heaven. Do something just a little bit different this morning than what I would normally do. Um, first of all, there are a few prayer requests that I failed to make mention of that I do uh, want to mention. Uh, you, you get up here and you don't believe this or not, but it's like your brain falls out of your head. And you try to remember everybody, you try to remember everything, and, and I'm sure there's some people sitting there, well, he didn't mention this, he didn't mention that. And, and let me say this, it's not because I don't care. It's really that I, I just, I have so much that I'm trying to remember, and I'm not trying to complain. I'm thankful for where the Lord's put me and always put on me. I, I love serving the Lord. But do be much in prayer, if you will, for Stephen and Katie Durham. Uh, that baby is due past due. Uh, Any time it could come. Uh, and so just be much in prayer for them. Been missing them here at church, uh, but with the baby and everything. And April, April reached out. She told Miss Regina, she said, if they want to come to church, she said, I can deliver that baby. And Miss Regina put back, she said, is there anything you can't do? 
And just in an, in an April kind of way, she put back, well, I can't grow a full beard. <laughs> and so anyway, do, do be much in prayer, if you will, for Katie and Stephen Durham. Uh, continue to pray, if you will, for Miss Linda Lacey. Lift her up to the Lord. Tim Lineback. There's so many uh, that we just need to be praying for. So many that are just going through a discouraging time right now and a hard time. If you will, be much in prayer for Miss Debbie Jackson. She's having some problems with her knee. Going to probably have to have a knee replacement. Uh, just uh, a lot on her right now. So be much in prayer for her and lift her up to the Lord. Uh, I'm glad we've got a, a God we can take burdens to. I'm glad that we don't have to carry our burdens. He said, cast in all you care upon uh, me, for I cares for you. He cares for us. And so I'm glad that, uh, that he cares for us. Uh, but uh, you, you will, if you will, be much in prayer for all those. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. Let's remember Trish Chris this morning. All right, let's remember that. All right, I told you I was going to do something just a little bit different. Uh, how many of you love your spouse? Amen. I hope there's hands up everywhere. Come on now. Well, amen. I love my spouse. Uh, and she has no idea what I'm about to do, and she's probably going to kill me. Uh, our anniversary is next Friday. And we're going to be in Tennessee for this Jubilee. Uh, and uh, Jubilee will be over Thursday, but still Friday we'll be making our way home. But I've seen her over and over and over and over uh, make sacrifices uh, for the ministry. And I'm thankful. She didn't marry a preacher. Uh, she didn't have to marry or stay with me when I announced my call to preach. Uh, but she has supported me every step of the way. You know the Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, and so, and Brother Mark used to say this all the time. He said, sometimes you just got to embarrass your flesh. Well, I'm about to embarrass her flesh. Um, so if you will, could you come up here, please? <laughs> um, Lord laid this on my heart last week for our anniversary. We're not really going to get to do anything for it. Uh, but as I said, she's, she's been right by my side every step of the way. Uh, and I've asked Brother Brandon, if he will, uh, to play this song uh, uh, for me and Miss April this morning. So <laughs> I know you're going to kill me. <laughs> Don't make this more awkward than it needs to be, brother. <laughs> She done gave up on you, brother. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. <laughs> it's not going to work. I tell you what, brother. Turn the pulpit mic on. We'll get it to play one way or another. <laughs> Use the red microphone.
Amen. Let me say it's been good being your pastor because I'm probably dead. <laughs> but uh, I do love my wife, and uh, I thank the Lord for her, and uh, God's really blessed me in more ways than uh, I could even stand here and tell you today. But happy anniversary, uh, and I love you. And uh, All right. <coughs> Enough lovey-dovey stuff, right? <laughs> Amen. But you, you do pray for me and my family. Many of you know starting in June we'll be going full time here at the church. Uh, and um, I just desire your prayers. I do. I know the Lord's going to see uh, to see uh, fit to do what he's uh, going to do. And he's going to get us through it. And uh, he'll, he'll make a way. As I told you just a little bit ago, where there is no way, he makes a way. And if God tells you to do something, the best thing you can do is do it. You can obey him. Uh, don't get in his way. Get out of the way. And just let God work. If you got your Bibles this morning, John chapter number 13. John chapter number 13. Uh, let me do say at the end of the service, many of you remember when I told you back at our trunk of treat, we had a young lady saved. Uh, and she's with us this morning. Miss Celeste is sitting here on the front row. Uh, and at the end of the service, I'm going to have her come up uh, and uh, let you shake her hand. Uh, many of you know the situation there. Uh, where she hasn't been able to come to church, but I want you to come and welcome her to the family uh, of, the, of God this morning uh, and just uh, let her know, and be an encouragement to her and let her know you love her and you're praying for her. But it's good to have Celeste with us this morning. Um, I'm going to grab my water before we get started. Um, John chapter number 13, I want to begin reading in verse number 1 and uh, give you what the Lord's given me today. Here in John chapter number 13, if you will stand with us in reverence and respect to the reading of God's word this morning. John chapter number 13, verse number 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world. Uh, I've got this line underlined in my Bible right here. He loved them unto the end. I'm glad he loves us to the end today. I'm glad he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He goes on to say, And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. 
After he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the tower with him, uh, he was girded. Then cometh he uh, to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, He that wash, washed needeth to save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. Now skip down with me if you will to verse number 21. The Bible says, When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. I'll tell you the title at the end of the message. But for now, I just want to kind of go down through this text and line up for you everything that's happened. And I want you to pay attention on purpose this morning. And I hope this will be a blessing to you. But let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we certainly are grateful and thankful for another opportunity to be in your house this morning, Father. God, I thank you for each and every person who's made their way out. God, I just pray now that you would just please just move in our midst. God, I pray, Lord, that hearts would be open, hearts would be receptive. God, I just pray, Lord, that if someone is here this morning, Lord, and never trusted in you, I just pray that today would be the day, Lord, that they would come to know you before it's eternally too late. God, I, I just I ask you, please, God, just move in our midst. Nothing will happen without you, Father. It will all be in vain without you, Lord. And, Lord, as I stand to preach, Father, I pray, God, and just ask for the filling of the Holy Spirit. I pray for your anointing, your touch, your power. I stand where no mortal man can stand alone. God, I need you this morning. I can't do this without you. I just pray, Father, you'd preach through me. Let it be you preaching and not me, Father. Let me say every word you won't said, nothing that you don't want said, Father. And I pray, Lord, your perfect will be accomplished in this service. And, Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. For it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Now, you can be seated. Thank you for standing. Now, just prior to what we read here, uh, or what we have read here this morning, just kind of give you an overview of what we've read. Uh, Jesus... Uh, wraps a towel around himself, he fills a basin with water, and he begins to one by one wash the feet of his men. And uh, Now that should have been done as soon as everybody walked into the room. It was, a, uh, it was the place of the lowest servant to do so. Uh, but none of them regarded themselves as the lowest servant. And so that task went undone. And so Christ did what they wouldn't do. And as the Bible told us uh, and what we just read, he girds a towel around his waist, he takes a basin of water, and he begins to one by one wash the feet of his disciples. And when he did so, Peter speaks up and he says, Lord, are, are you planning on washing my feet? You, you planning on washing my feet? And, uh, and Jesus said, you don't know what I'm doing now, but you'll know thereafter. Peter said, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. And Peter said, Lord, not my feet, but my hands and my head only. And Jesus says, all you need is to have your feet washed. And then he says, but you're still not all clean. And, and the way he said that made it clear that he wasn't talking about feet at that moment. He was talking about the fact that, that one of them in their very midst was, was a dirty and darkened and stained by sin, sinner. Hey, and Satan was all in him. He, he was referring to one that would betray. So as he and his men sat back down at the table to eat and fellowship a little bit more, that was what was on his mind and that was what was weighing on his mind so heavily in fact that in the text we just read, he, he, he came right out and said it. In the next few moments, he was going to, in a very picturesque way, point out who the betrayer was. And, and, and again, I'll give you the title at the end of the message, but I just want to work our way down through this text uh, and keep your Bibles close because we're going to turn to a few other passages and look at a few other things today. But I want you to notice number one with me this morning, if you're writing this down. I want you to notice in verse number 21, I want you to notice a sad testimony. A sad testimony. Look, look at your Bible. The Bible said, when Jesus had thus said, he, had a, how, uh, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. 
a sad testimony. Now quite often in church somebody will stand up and they'll give a testimony. We, we have them here quite often where people will stand and they, 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 they stand and give that testimony and they'll, they'll tell just how uh, God, uh, good God's been to them and how God's blessed them and, and just thank God for saving them. And if we're all honest today, friend, God's been good to us all. God's blessed us all. We have reason to give testimony. We have reason to be thankful. Hey, friend, we've been blessed this morning. Oftentimes, testimonies can happen in a very spontaneous way. Somebody will simply stand and say, Preacher, could I have a moment to testify of just how good God's been? And, uh, but, but this verse makes it one of only two times uh, that, that we read of that Jesus has ever said to have testified himself. Both of them are found right here in the Gospel of John. And both of them are actually negative rather than positive. In John chapter number 4 and verse number 44, we find that Jesus testified to the fact that the place a prophet has uh, is no honor, uh, a prophet has no honor in his own country. Uh, and, but, but here we find him testifying that, that one of his own men was at that very moment in the room what was going to betray him, was going to turn his back on him, was, what was, what was going uh, to uh, reject him and deceive him. Now there's something about that that just breaks my heart this morning. I'd really love to be able to, to read the gospel record and find the lives of his men produce such consistent joy and happiness in the heart of Christ that he was constantly testifying about how much of a blessing they were. But if you've read the gospel record, you know that's not the case at all. And this verse tells us of this testimony of Christ and how it came about. And it came about because his spirit was troubled. As we would... Put it in his heart was troubled. His emotions were in such a tumultuous state because of something he knew that, that only one other person in that room knew. What a sad testimony that any of these men that Christ had loved so much and taught so carefully and ministered to so tenderly would, would sell him out for a fistful of dollars. But I wonder how often up in heaven that the Lord Jesus testifies of that kind of thing of his own people here, now, and today. You think about that. Christ is watching us. He knows our every move. He testifies to the fact. I wonder today, I can't help but wonder, does he testify to the fact of, in a negative way that, 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 that we're not thankful people? That's not the message today, but that's something to think about. That would break my heart to think that today. But right during the Last Supper, the darkest moment of his life up to that point, he had to acknowledge and testify that his heart was breaking because one of his own men was going to betray him. Can you just imagine how heartbroken Christ was knowing that, that somebody that, that, that had walked with him, and by the way, we'll get to this more here in just a moment, but he knew all along he was going to betray him. But how that had to break the heart of Christ. A sad testimony, but look at your Bible at verse number 22. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. I want you to notice a surprising truth. A surprising truth. Now when people are around each other, especially if they're around each other all day and every day, it usually doesn't take them long to, to get to know one another. Usually doesn't take you long to, to get to know that person that you're around. Or let me say it like this, it doesn't take long for them to see through each other after a while. You, you get to know somebody, you get to know if they're, if they're real or if they're just playing the game. You get to know everything about them. You get to know their personality. You get to know uh, everything there is about them the longer you're around that person. Let me say this morning to the young people, we've got a few young people in here. Let me say, be sure to know somebody for a long time before you get engaged or before you get married. Don't just give yourself to the first person. Get to know them. Know everything there is to know about them. I, I, I gave this example. I'll be honest with you. I preached this last night at a youth rally. I said, Lord, and I wanted to preach something different today, but the Lord said, no, you're going to preach this. But the example I gave last night at the youth rally, I told the, the young ladies there at that youth rally, I said, young ladies, I said, if you're dating a lumberjack, 
and, 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 and you're noticing that the axe is always in the back seat of the car and the trees ain't getting cut down and there's dead bodies popping up in your town. It might be time to say goodbye. You don't know him like you think you know him. Some of you is like, you use that in a youth rally? Get to know the person. <laughs> if you're around somebody all day, every day, you, you get to where you can see through them. And, and that's what makes what we're reading in this verse such a surprise and truth. All these men have been around Judas for at least three to three and a half years. Maybe even some of them longer. And many of the disciples clearly knew each other before Christ called them to follow him. And it's not that Judas at, at one point had believed and, and been right there in with them and recently changed. No, you read over in John chapter number 6. And verse number 64, and Jesus said, that, But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. He knew all along. Judas didn't believe from the beginning and that means he was just riding the gravy train in order to embezzle funds from day one. Yet he had to be so masterful in his performance that entire time that when Jesus here at the Last Supper point blank informed him that one of them was going to betray him, everybody looked around confused. Everybody had no idea whatsoever who he was talking about. This was just the... This wasn't just the biggest betrayal of all time. Can I say it was the best betrayal of all time? By that I mean no one had ever so successfully fooled every human being around him as Judas did. Other than Jesus, literally nobody else in that room had a clue. Nobody. We see a sad testimony, a surprise in truth, but I want you to notice thirdly. A sly teammate. A sly teammate. Look with me, if you will, over at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 26. Matthew, chapter number 26, and verse number 22. Matthew, chapter number 26, verse number 22. Look what your Bible says. I want to read down through verse number 25. The Bible says, And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he would not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Now at the Passover feast there was quite often large numbers of family or, or friends together in the same room and at the same table for the same meal. And one of the prescribed ingredients for the meal was a dish of bitter herbs, something like a, what would be like a liquidy gravy. And since it wasn't convenient for everybody there just to dip in one central dish in the middle of the table, they also provided smaller dishes that would be taken out of the central dish and then two or three people together would share that to dip into because they could recline nearby to one, uh, one another and everybody could reach that small dish. You, it's kind of like when you go to the Mexican restaurant and they give you those, those, those chips and that salsa. And don't lie, you know you double dip. <laughs> Miss Regina said, no, I don't. <laughs> It's the same principle, though. You all gather around. They only give you, you got a whole table full of people. Eight or ten people, they give you three dishes. <laughs> Sometimes you got to share. But that's what's going on here. And so Jesus and his 13 men are all reclining around this low slum table. And Jesus informs them that, that one of them is going to betray him. And they immediately in sorrow begin to ask him who it is. And he responds with the first of multiple instances of, of pointing out that it's Judas. He actually answers their question by saying, The one who dips with me in the dish. Now, there wouldn't have been more than two or three people dipping in that particular dish. Y'all following me? And it's possible that at that very moment, only Judas himself was dipping in that dish. And so Jesus either point blank singled out Judas with those words or at the very least, he narrowed it down uh, dramatically to where it seemed like everybody could have figured it out. And at this point, the timeline gets really interesting. 
First of all, the disciples, they begin to, in a very sorrowful way, ask, Is it I? Is it me? Is it, is it I? And a detail that Mark adds in the Gospel of Mark uh, makes it even more dramatic. You don't have to turn there, but you read over in Mark chapter number 14 and verse number 19. And the Bible says, And they begin to be sorrowful and say unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? Jesus said what he said, and it's almost like it completely had taken the breath out of the room. When Matthew says they begin to say, and then you compare it with what Mark said, it seems like Jesus made his accusation, and then a period of stunned silence ensued. And then finally, one of them said, Lord, is it me? Am I the one that's going to betray you? Is it, is it me? And, and get, Jesus doesn't say anything. Complete silence. Doesn't say a word. The next one says, well, what about me, Lord? Is it me? And again, Jesus doesn't say anything. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Lord Jesus, is it me? And Jesus doesn't say anything. But there's at least one person he hadn't asked yet. And it's after everybody asked that Jesus spoke all the words of Matthew chapter number 26 and verse number 23 and 24. Look what your Bible says. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he'd not been born. Jesus pointed out or at least very much narrowed the focus down to the betrayer. And then he said in so many words, all this was prophesied in the Old Testament and it's going to happen. And yet, uh, woe unto the, uh, the, the, the man responsible for the betrayal and the one that makes it happen. It'd been better if he'd never been born. Now, did God know that this was going to happen? You better believe he knew it. He knew it was going to happen. He absolutely did, but, but, but did he make it happen? No, he didn't make it happen. He didn't make it happen. J Judas did that to, to foreknow and to foreordain are two very different things. Don't ever fall for the lie uh, of Satan that God actually causes men and women to sin and do wrong and then judge them for that after they sin. You're born with a choice. You have a choice in the matter. You don't have to do anything today. You have a choice. God's given every man, woman, boy, and girl a free will to do as they will. And in his foreknowledge, he knows all of it before it happens. And Judas made his own choice. He made his own deal with the devil. And it very literally would have been better for him to have never been born. And it's after Christ uh, uh, pointed all that out that Judas, the very last one, speaks up and he says, Is it I? He knew good and well it was him. How could he not? This was yet another, we'll call it an Oscar winning performance by Judas. From, from, from a, a man that, that fooled everybody in the room that wasn't Christ. Nevertheless, Judas had, had a, he'd asked a question. And Jesus was going to answer that question. Look again at Matthew chapter number 26 and look at verse number 25. The Bible says, Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. Now at this point, you, you really need to know what those words, Thou hast said, mean. Just, uh, just like we have a figure of speech, they did as well. And, and this particular figure of speech meant the same thing every time someone said it. It meant uh, 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 you're correct or yes. Now put yourself there as one of the other disciples there that night. Now all the rest of you have asked a question. Jesus hasn't responded to your question. Jesus hasn't answered your question. He hasn't said anything. But, but then he says, it's the one who dips in the dish with me. And guess what? Judas is dipping in the dish with me. Judas finally speaks up and he says, is it me? Can you just imagine the awkwardness of that moment? 
You're all sitting around, two or three of you dipping, and there's some at the other end of the table and some on down, on down, and, and they're gathered in groups of two or three and everybody's dipping. And when Jesus said, it's the one that dippeth, and everybody looks and Judas is just sitting there minding his own business. Is it me? The, the, the awkwardness of that moment. You ever, been, you ever been in a situation like that where everybody's just looking at you? It had to be an, an awkward moment for him. But, but he speaks up and he says, is it me? And Jesus says, you're correct. Now don't you think they, that, they, that they would know at this point? Don't you think they, that they would know at this point who it is? And Jesus still wasn't even done pointing him out. You read over in Luke chapter number 22 and verse number 21. He said, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. Now, can you see in your mind what just happened? Jesus says it's the one who dips in the dish with me. And Judas suddenly pulls his hand back and he puts it on the table. And he says, is it me? And Jesus says, you're correct. And by the way, it's the one who has his hand on the table with me. And Judas had his hand on the table. And yet nobody got it. Nobody still figured it out. Now please understand with me this morning how very good the devil is at what he does. How very good the, the devil is at deceiving. Hey, and, and how very good those he's empowering are at what they do. You better be filled with the Holy Spirit. You better be walking very close to God every day of your life. Because there's no being in the universe as subtle and deceptive as a human being that's being empowered by Satan. A sad testimony, a surprising truth, a sly teammate. But I want you to notice fourthly, a supreme tenderness. A supreme tenderness. Now go back to our text in John chapter number 13. John chapter number 13, look at verse number 23. Verse number 23, you want to read down through verse number 25. The Bible says there in John chapter number 13, verse number 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Now Jesus had, had gone out of his way to point out Judas. You would have thought these men would have done figured that out. And yet he's not come right out though and said the words, Judas is the one who's going to betray me. You ever wondered about that? Why not just come right out and say, hey, Judas is the one. Judas is the one who's going to betray me. Judas, Judas, Judas is the one who's going to uh, 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 pat me on the back. But all he's really doing is, is wiping a spot off to stick the knife in. Judas is the one. Why, why not come right out and say that? There's two reasons. First of all, it's because his entire purpose was coming to just to die. His entire purpose was to come and go to Calvary's cross and shed his precious blood for, for you and for me and for the rest of the world. And, and so that was his whole purpose of coming. And Jesus wasn't, uh, uh, excuse me, and Judas was going to be the one that, that, that would help make that happen. And if Jesus had pointed out Judas by name, he'd have never gotten out of that room alive to go and betray Jesus. And if nobody else would have, Peter would have killed him right there on the spot. You remember what he did to Malchus, the soldier there in the garden when they come to get Jesus? He cut his ear off. He, I, I really believe with all my heart he's aiming for his head. You think he wouldn't have killed Judas if he found out he was betraying him? I believe that with all my heart. But number two, because the way he pointed Judas out was to their benefit later on. And not for his benefit right at the moment. He wasn't interested in pointing out Judas so he could escape Calvary. But he was interested in pointing him out so he could specifically, about everything else, go about it. And in the days to weeks and, come, uh, weeks and months to come and years to come, it would contribute to the faith of his men. And looking back on all this, all of them would realize that Jesus wasn't just a man. Uh, he was the omniscient son of God. He knew what they all missed. But, but at that moment, none of those men knew that. And at that moment, 11 of them really wanted to know who the betrayer was. 
And so Peter, the one who everyone else looked to after Christ, knew just what to do. You see, one of the disciples was really, really close to Christ. We know who that is. That's John. And so Peter, Peter looks over to John. Peter looks over uh, to, to, to John and, and the one who made himself beloved to Christ, the John who would later on entrust the care of his own mother, the John who at the, that very moment was reclining right in front of Jesus, uh, uh, up against his bosom, and, and therefore uh, uh, leans his head back on, on, on the chest of Christ. And, and probably in a whisper, I can almost see Peter looking at John in, in a whisper and saying, He wants to know. He wants to know who it is. Peter knew that if anybody could get an answer from Jesus, John would. Now listen, I don't know about you, but but I long today to be so close to Christ that if anybody needs a prayer answered, if anybody needs to get through to God, they could come to me because they knew, hey, that I could get an answer from Christ. That should be your desire today. To, to be so close that, 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 uh, that, that he'll answer your prayer and that somebody will come to you uh, and, uh, and want you to pray on their behalf because they know you can get that answer. I hope that's your desire today. And this ain't the sermon this morning, but let me say this. If somebody, if somebody entrusts you enough to say, pray for me, don't just say, I'll pray for you. Pray for them. Take that burden to Christ on their behalf. If somebody's put that much confidence in you to know that you walk that close to God, to know that you have that kind of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that you can pray and that you can get a prayer answered, and they come to you and they say, well, you pray for me, you better pray for them. We're in a day and time now where we'll put a praying hands emoji, which by the way is a high five if y'all didn't know that. Uh, a praying hands emoji on Facebook and say, I'll pray for you and never give them another thought. You know I'm right. Pray for them. And so, John asked. And Jesus answered. And look at John chapter number 13 and verse number 26. The Bible says there in verse number 26, Jesus answered, It is he, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now oftentimes at, 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 at a feast, the master of the feast would give a bit of gesture of kindness to a guest. And he himself would dip a bit of the bread in one of the dishes and soak up some of the juices and hand it to him. And when John asked the Lord who it is, Jesus responded by saying, Whoever I give the sop after I've dipped it, that's the one. And then he dipped it. And he handed it to Judas. Now there's two aspects of tenderness that I see Jesus demonstrating here. Two aspects. I can't help but notice. One, there's a special tenderness that Jesus demonstrated to John. Jesus gave John a more specific point blank answer that, that, that he didn't give to anybody else. And Jesus made himself, or excuse me, John made himself so close to Christ. And uh, Jesus favored him because of that. But number two, there's a special tenderness that Jesus allowed to Judas and showed to Judas. In pointing out Judas as the betrayer, Jesus was nonetheless extending one more impact of kindness and one more instant of kindness. And love toward Judas when he handed him that sop. Now let me just say it doesn't surprise me in the least bit. That Jesus was kind and compassionate and tender to John. John had made himself so close to Christ. John had a, a daily walk with Christ. John, John was the, 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 uh, the, the one who, who Jesus loved the most. And, and that, that doesn't surprise me at all that, that he made himself uh, so close and that Jesus had, had, had given him that compassion. But let me just say, it blows me away that Jesus was kind and compassionate and tender to Judas, the one who was right in the middle of betraying him. Wouldn't to God that we would have the Spirit of Christ in us like Jesus had that day. People do us wrong, and we turn our back on them. We never want anything else to do with them. Yet Jesus knew what Judas was fixing to do. 
And he still showed that act of kindness and love. You think about the Lord Jesus as he hung there on that cross. Beaten beyond recognition. Beard plucked out. Spit in his face. Blood running down his face. A crown of thorns on his head. Beaten beyond recognition. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And we want to go through life and hold grudges. And we want to go through life and not forgive. And he done this to me, and he done that to me. And I'll never talk to him again. If Jesus can forgive after what all they did to him, what's our excuse? What's our excuse? Let me say, there's never been nor will there ever be anybody as kind and compassionate and tender as the Lord Jesus Christ was. But you notice, fifthly, and I'm almost done, I promise. But you notice a straightforward telling. A straightforward telling. Look at John chapter number 13, verse number 26 again. The Bible says, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered uh, into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what instant he spake this unto him. As we've already seen this morning, uh, 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 even so, uh, something so obvious, even something that should have been so obvious and, and point blank to the disciples has just gone over, uh, over everybody's head. Nobody in the room has a clue what's going on except for Jesus. Literally, no one could believe it was Judas. Had Jesus done this to to anybody else in the room, everybody would have immediately fingered that one as the betrayer. But Judas was so very good at this performance that he was putting on. When, when, When Jesus pointed out Judas, 11 other men completely missed. But Judas didn't miss it. And there was somebody else there that night who didn't miss it either. Look at your Bible at verse number 27. And after the stop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Jesus knew who the betrayer was. Judas knew who the betrayer was. But can I say this morning, Satan knew who the betrayer was. And seeing the door wide open in that moment, Satan stepped in the heart of Judas one final time. And it's amazing to think, while there was 11 men who had no clue and one man who could feel it, there was one man who could see it. The eyes of the Lord are in every place this morning. He sees the evil. He sees the good. Hey, the spiritual world as well as the physical world. And please understand in that room that night, Jesus locked eyes with Lucifer. The one who betrayed him all those years earlier. One final glare and Satan steps into Judas and Jesus watches it happen and nobody else can see it. Jesus pointed out Judas specifically by handing him the sop. Satan stepped into Judas for the final time and Jesus said, what you're doing, do it quickly. Jesus is saying, I I know you're going to betray me, Judas. I, I know what you're about to do. Hey, just don't drag it out. Just do it. Just, just hurry up and do it. Go ahead and do it. And we can almost hear the, 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 the broken heart of Christ in those words. But, but I want you to notice in verse number 28. Look at your Bible. Now, no man at the table knew for what instant he spake this unto him. Nobody knew Judas was the betrayer. And nobody understood what Jesus was saying. I want you to notice a sorrowful tale. A sorrowful tale. Look at verse number 29. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, Abide those things that that we have need of against the feast, or that it should uh, give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out. Now notice the last part of verse number 30. And it was night. And it was night. The other disciples, they, they didn't understand what Jesus meant when he said, that, that thou doest do quickly. The, the entire context of the conversation should have made it clear. But again, Judas had everybody fooled. And so when Jesus said these words, everybody assumed he was sending Judas, who was the treasurer, 
on some tasks to buy some necessary things for the Passover feast or to give something to the poor and the needy. But Judas knew. He knew what he was doing and he knew what time it was. And again, I pointed it out to you there in verse number 30. He says, he having received the sop went immediately out and it was nigh. Seeing his chance to get out of there, Judas didn't hesitate. The Bible says he went immediately out. At that point, he was in a hurry to get away from Christ, and he was in a hurry to get away from any of the other disciples, just in case they, they were to figure him out. But as he stepped out, the Bible says it was night. I believe with all my heart this fact is recorded for us in, in the Bible, not only for the time of day literally, it was literally night, but it was also night in the heart of Judas. It was also hard in, uh, a night in the heart of Judas. He, he walked into the, uh, in the light of the world for somewhere around three and a half years. But now it's night. And for Judas, the sun would never shine again. Judas, by his own choice and his own free will, became the guest of dishonor that night at the Last Supper. It was night in his heart. Jesus gave him every chance to take the right side. But he refused to do so. And 11 men came to their test of taking sides by the choice that they were to make right then and there. And they ultimately give their life to Christ. But one man chose poorly, sold Christ out for a, fist, a fistful of dollars, and died and went to hell just a few hours later. Everybody made a choice that night and God let them do it. Let me say, everybody's going to make a, a, a choice this morning and God's going to let you do that. Some of you have already made that choice and some of you are coming to the place of your choice and you'll make a choice this morning and God will respect the side you choose and He'll let you choose. It's your choice. But I want you to notice lastly this morning, and I'm almost done. I want you to notice a special place at the table. A special place at the table. Now I read something to you just a few moments ago. Something that most Christians have read over and over again during their lifetimes. But I want to read it to you one more time. And I want to, I want to help you really see it and really understand. This is what I, I really want to get to for just a few moments. Look at verse 26. Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, do you remember the, the situation we talked about back uh, a little while ago about the, the seating situation and everybody sharing the, the, the dish and the, the smaller dish and, and two or three are sopping out of one? Y'all remember that? With 13 men around that table, the, they cluster together in smaller groups of two or three with those smaller dishes where two or three could dip together. And here's what we know and here's what we don't know. We know that John was right there within touching distance of the Lord Jesus. I mean, he was so close he could lean on his breast, the Bible tells us. We don't know where Matthew was. We, we don't know where Thomas was. If I had to guess, I'd say Thomas was, was probably at the end of the table with a more stouter chair because he didn't have no faith. Doubting Thomas. We don't know that. Fact is, we, we, we don't know where any of them were. We, we, we don't know where, where Matthew was. We, we don't know where Thomas was. We don't know where the other disciples were at at that table. But, but, but John's location, we do know. John was within touching distance of Christ. But let me say this. So was Judas. So was Judas. Judas was near enough that, that Jesus could personally hand him that piece of bread. And Jesus took the person who was the nearest and dearest to his heart. And he made sure he was right beside him, right there at the table. But he also took the person who was the furthest away to his heart. And made sure he was right beside him at that table. The title of this message is a special place at the table. If you don't hear anything else I said this morning, I want you to hear this. Listen to me carefully. Judas died and went to hell that night. But he didn't die and go to hell from the other end of the table. He died and went to hell right beside of the Lord Jesus. Right beside him. 
He died and went to hell close enough that Jesus could have put his arm around him. He was so near that he could see the careworn lines in the face of Jesus. He could see the color of his eyes. He could feel the breath of Jesus on his chest. Judas was so close that he could almost hear just a Jesus whisper, I'm doing this for you. Judas wasn't way down at the end. He was right there beside him at the table. If you want to know just how bad Christ wants to save you, look at what he did for Judas. He took the most notorious sinner in history, the one who was going to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver, the, 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 the dirtiest of the dirty, the lowest of the low, the worst of the worst, and he put him right beside him at the table. We'll have Brother Curry come to the piano now. He gave him one more chance. One more chance to receive Christ. You say, Brother Robert, but you don't know how wicked I am. You don't know what I've done. You don't know my past. And you're absolutely right this morning. And I don't need to know. Jesus has a special spot for you at the table. And it's right beside of him this morning. He takes the worst of the worst. And he puts them the closest to him. So they can be saved. You may be here this morning and think you can't be saved, but Jesus has a special place for you there at the table. It's not at the other end. It's not way down there. It's right beside him. He has a special place just for you. It sure would be a shame for you to be right next to Jesus at the table today. And you get up and you walk out those doors. Not knowing what the next minute holds. Not knowing if this is your last day alive. People die every day. They don't wake up planning on dying. Jesus has them right next to him at the table. And they die and go to hell. Had a few man, just uh, a young man just a few weeks ago. Chris. Walked the aisle and gets saved. I'll be honest with you this morning. I'd been talking with Miss Kim and Miss Becky and uh, that we were all praying that Chris would get saved. And I'm sure we've all had these situations where somebody comes to you and they're burdened for, for a, a lost loved one. They want to see them saved. But in your mind you're thinking, man, they're way down there on the other end of the table. I'll pray for them, but I just, I just, I think that's a, probably a lost cause. I mean, let's be honest this morning. We're human. And I was praying that Chris would get saved. I, I was. And, and, but, but I'll be honest. I was thinking in the back of my mind. He's probably. If I can uh, use the figure of speech this morning. At the, uh, at, the end of, uh, the, at the other end of the table. That morning. When I seen his hand slip up. And then he got up and he walked that up. And I took him back there in that prayer room. And I said, Chris, what you need this morning? I want them to tell me they want to get saved. And I'll be honest with you, I still was thinking, now, I don't know if that's what this is for or not, but we'll, let's just see what the Lord has. Here. But God had him right there. Right there at the end of the table where Christ was. With him touching him. Right there. He bowed his head and he got saved and asked Christ to save him. Don't ever give up on a lost loved one. Pray for him. Pray for him. Christ wants to save him. He's got a special place for him right there at the table. And if you're here this morning lost and undone, never trusted in Christ as your personal Savior, he's got a special place for you. Right beside him at the table. Judas wasn't on the other end. He was right there beside him. You know deep down inside this morning if you're lost or saved. You know deep down inside if you knew, if you were to die today, that hell would be your home for all of eternity. There's only two choices in this thing. 
Heaven or hell, life or death. That's life or death right there. Life's got many choices. There's many choices. You, you can leave here today. You can choose where you go eat. You can choose if you want to come back to church tonight. You, you've got that, that choice is yours. But Jesus also gives you the choice to either pick him or reject him. Picking him means heaven. Rejecting him means hell. And if he's dealing with your heart today, hey, I'd hate to walk out those doors knowing that I was right beside him at the table and I never trust him as my Lord and Savior. He may never deal with your heart again. And you walk out those doors. And today could be your last day on this earth. And you die and go to hell. We're standing all over the building. Let me say this to the Christians here today. Christians are praying, but let me say this. Wouldn't it be a good time to gather around an old-fashioned altar and say, Hey, thank you for giving me a special spot at the table. Hey, he could have he rejected you. He could have turned you away. He could have let you die and go to hell. But I thank God he's long-suffering. I thank God that he put a special spot right there at the table, right next to me and right next to him, where I could be saved. Now would be a good time just to come say thank you, Lord, for a special place at the table. Thank you for saving my soul. Now would be a good time to come pray for a lost loved one. That you want to be saved. Hey, now would be a good time if you're lost and you've never trusted in Christ as your personal Savior. Now would be a good time for you to step out and say, I want to be saved. You mind the Lord this morning as Brother Curry plays. Amen. I think that's a sufficient invitation. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, for our evening worship service. Uh, Brother Bob June will be preaching tonight. You'll be praying for him. And be here if you can. Please be here uh, and be in your place. No matter who's preaching, uh, if the church doors are open, Hebrews 10, 25, still in the Bible, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I often say this, but I'll say it again. We're, we're getting closer to the end of this thing, uh, not further away. And so as we get closer, we need to gather more. Uh, and so if the doors of the church are open, you need to be here. Uh, do pray for me and my family. We're going to leave today about 2 o'clock and head up to Pigeon Forge. So we can make sure we're up there first thing in the morning and make sure everything's in line with the Jubilee. I actually have a meeting tonight with Brother Paul Barber when we get up there. Uh, but you do pray for us tonight uh, as we travel to Tennessee. Uh, and I'll be praying for you. And thank you so much for being here. The visitors, thank you for being here. Please come back and be with us. Uh, we're just a, a friendly little old country church. Uh, and, and let me say this. If, if there is someone here this morning who's never trusted in Christ and you want to be saved but you didn't want to step out in front of everybody, see somebody after the service. Just make sure you get that taken care of. See me. See somebody. Uh, let somebody take the Bible and show you what it means to be saved. Uh, it's the most important decision you'll ever make in this life. 
is that decision to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Uh, what we're going to do now, I told you that Celeste is with us this morning, the young lady that was saved back in October at our trunk retreat. I'm going to have her, and you can come stand with her. She probably won't want to stand by herself. I'm going to have her come stand up here uh, in the front and, and let you come by and shake her hand and uh, congratulate her on being saved uh, and uh, welcome her to the family of God uh, and just try to be an encouragement to her. So she's going to step up here, and we're going to close out in a word of prayer. Uh, and dismiss at this time. Brother Ray Lundy, how about you make your way up this morning and close us out in a word of prayer? Uh, and if all hearts are clear, we'll go ahead and dismiss this morning. Be praying for the Jubilee this week, uh, praying for all the preachers uh, and all that's involved with that. But uh, thank you so much for being here. Hope you have a great week. God bless you. We love you. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful for your love and your mercy. We're thankful, Lord, for salvation. Thankful, Lord, for what you mean to us. Lead us and guide us and open our eyes to things that we need to see. Encourage us, Lord, today by your word that we've heard today and we just praise you for it. Go with each one as we go to our homes. Bring us back at the next appointed time and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.